Well, good morning, church. How y'all doing this morning? All right, all right. So we are in our last week of Abide. This has been a really good series. This has actually been one of my favorite series, uh, maybe of all the years in this church. Um, I was really uh, blessed by a a lot of the the teaching and the word in Abide. Okay? So we are in week six, and to start this week off, we're going to use our imagination a little bit. All right? We're going to tap into our imagination. And we're going to... We're going to use our imagination around John 14, verse 28. Okay, let me read it. Remember what I told you. This is Jesus speaking. Remember what I told you. I'm going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, you would be happy that I'm going to the Father, who is greater than I am. So if you need to, you can close your eyes. Can you imagine Jesus telling his disciples that I'm going away to the Father? Maybe you can also imagine a few demons lingering by. Maybe they're spying on Jesus and they're like, huh, can you you hear what this Jesus guy is saying? He said he's going to the Father. And they're snickering amongst each other, and they're like, you know what? We're going to kill this guy. He, he thinks he's going back to the Father. We're, we're going we're to put him up on that cross. Yeah, man, it's going to be so nice, man. It's going to be so nice. And, and, and then one of the demons is like, you, you know what? I really, I'm really excited about. You know, once he's gone, we're, we're really going to have a full crack at those 12 goofs that always travel around with them. I can't, I can't wait till their spiritual bodyguard guard goes to heaven. We're gonna really ha- have it possible so we can really touch them this time. And I can also imagine the disciples. Even though Jesus says, be happy for me, I, I can imagine some of them weren't. Maybe some, some of them were afraid, right? It's, it's sort of like if you had an older sister or older brother, or maybe that, that big, strong person at school that kind of watched out for you. I don't know if any of you can, experience, uh, can attest to that. But maybe they graduate and they're going off to college. Maybe they transfer schools, or maybe they're going to the military. And suddenly you're like, oh, man, that, that protector, that person I saw as a person that I could confide in or, or run to is suddenly gone. That protection is gone. But, you know, Jesus is awesome because he didn't leave us down here alone. He prayed to the Father, protect them from the evil one. So today... In our last week of Abide, we're going to look at God's protection and how it goes beyond the simple service of being a supernatural shield. Okay? Let's pray. Lord Father, thank you for your word today. I I pray, Lord God, that you give us understanding, a deeper understanding about how you protect us from the evil one, how the truth of your word brings protection into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to be looking in John 17 this morning. We're going to be reading from 6 to 18. All right, it starts off like this. I have revealed to you, to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I I have is a gift from you, for I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. 
All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me, given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that no one was lost except the one headed for destruction as the scriptures foretold. Now I am coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. So a little context about this scripture. We, this is Jesus talking and he's, and he's praying to the Father. And this is late in Jesus' ministry. He's 33 years old. He's about to be betrayed. He's, he's about to be put on the cross to be crucified. And he knows all this. And he knows it's going to be a hard time for his disciples. Because as he goes to the Father, he knows the church will grow, but he also knows with the growth, there will be persecution that comes with that growth. Let's focus on verse 14. Jesus says, I have given them your word, and the world hates them, because they do, they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. This may be obvious to some of you, but if we're going to fully benefit from God's protection, we can't be a part of the world. It's obvious. We can't be a part of the world. What is the world? Ephesians 2 gives us a great definition of what the world is. Verses, two, verses 1 through 3 says this. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin. Just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Now, it doesn't take a degree in physics or for you to be a rocket scientist to see that you're not going to fully benefit from God, God's protection if you're subject to his anger. I think that's pretty, pretty obvious as well. But just a little recap of what this scripture is saying. Being of the world is having the lust of the flesh, the, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. The world is disobeying God, refusing to obey him. On the rather obeying the devil. And the scripture says, and those that do that, it says that Satan himself is at work in their heart. Now, before I came to Christ, I had no idea that was going on. And, and honestly, that's, that can be a hard hard truth to accept that, man, you know, Satan was working in my heart, but he was. And before we come to Christ, just like the scripture says, we are obeying the devil. We are in our sinful nature, obeying our flesh. So it's either we belong to God or we belong to the devil. There's no in between. There's only two camps. Is either you're with God or you're with Satan. But you know, when we belong to God, He's got our back. 
He's watching out for his. He's looking out for his children. And God is great that he provides his children with physical protection. Aren't you glad for that? I know I'm glad. Because there's a bunch of little demons running around trying to do what Satan wants and wants them to do. But God is like, no, that's my son. That's my daughter. I'm not going to have you touch them. He provides that physical protection. Now, God in his mercy sometimes does protect people that don't follow him. And that's his mercy. That's our God. That's how great he is. And I'm sure he has a reason in doing that at times, but his children receive the full benefit of his protection. So let's make sure we belong to God and not to the world. Now let's dig a little deeper. Let's look at verse 17. It says, make them holy by your truth. Uh, Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. So here's a key verse in understanding that God's protection, what God's protection is all about. Verse, let's zoom in on verse 18. It says, just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. Them into the world. His disciples. His followers. So, Before Jesus was to be uh, betrayed, he gave the disciples something. What did he give them? He gave them the great commission. He wanted his disciples to make more disciples. He wanted them to go into the world and preach the gospel, spread Jesus Christ everywhere they went. But he knew they would be hated for it because the world hates Jesus. And he knew as they would go on their missionary trips that they would have a great big target on their back. And a lot of you in here are probably remembering stories from Acts of how they would go to certain regions and people would reject them for preaching Jesus and drive them out of their region. They were hated for spreading the gospel. They had a big target on their back. See, God's protection is not just about keeping our physical bodies from harm. It's more than that. It's more than that. It's about giving us the opportunity to live a life full of purpose in Him. God's protection goes hand in hand with God's purpose. So just like Jesus prayed to the Father to protect disciples, Uh, the disciples as they went into the world on mission, he's praying for us as well. As we go into the world to do what the Father has destined us to do. Verse 20 of the same chapter, I'm just going to read it. Jesus says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message, through the gospel. Jesus is praying for us as well, not just the disciples. He's praying for us as well. See, protection is really for the mission. It's not just for us while we sit in here in these four walls or when we're relaxing or sleeping at home. It's really for the mission. It's there for us to succeed in anything that God has set out before us. But there's still more. Because his protection also comes from the truth in God's word. Abiding in the word protects us from blindly following lies that can lead us right into the hands of the evil one. The truth of of the word protects us uh, in our relationships, in our finances, in our minds, our our, our way of thinking. It protects us in our perspective as we renew our mind in the Word of God. See, these things play an important role in our lives. But if, if Satan can get in, if the enemy can get in and just veer us off a few of these things or 
maybe even one, He can slow us down. He can can trip us up in whatever God has set for you to do. Each one of you will live different lives. You will touch different people. You will influence different circles. And all of these play a big part into it. If Satan is, is coming for you, he could maybe touch your finances. He could try to touch your way of thinking. Maybe he could even try to touch your health. But God gives us protection. And he keeps us protected so that we can grow into the full potential of what he meant for us. So not only does it protect us from the enemy, it also protects us uh, from ourselves. We have our own mind. We have our own flesh. Sometimes the hardships that come on us is not because of the enemy. Sometimes if we're not abiding in the truth of God's word, we can believe our own lies. I'm a silly guy. I think most of you kind of know that by now. I I love to laugh. I love to make other people laugh. Laughter and humor is a big part of my life. And a long time ago in, in, in high school, I was a freshman. I believed the lie of popularity. The lie of popularity. I, I believed it. So I'm in math class. And I think we're done with our work because everyone's talking and, and giggling. And you know how high schoolers get when we don't have to do any work. We're just, and the teacher's kind of just letting us be. As long as we don't get uh, too rambunctious. And, and, you know, everyone wants to be in that popular light. So my thing is, is making people laugh. So I was like, well, you know, I'm going to get a lot of people to laugh. So I noticed one of the friends I was, uh, or I was becoming friends with, uh, he got up. And I thought, hmm, it would be nice to play a prank right now. So I did the simple pull the chair as he's sitting down. And you know, all of us start laughing and and we're just like, oh man, you know, you just laugh at people in high school. And uh, the thing is, is when he fell down, he was like, oh. He kind of made this noise and this this groan, and he was kind of slow to get up. And remember, I believe this lie of popularity, so I did the dumbest thing ever. I was like, I did it. I did that. Because I I thought that if people knew that I I did this prank and made them laugh, that, man, Van is cool, man. We, we like them. We, we're going we're gonna to become his friend. So class gets out, and before I know it, uh, Van, you're wanted in the office. I'm like, oh, shoot. What's going on? I had no idea. So I, I'm going to the office. Uh, I'm going to the vice president's, uh, vice principal uh, office. And I walk in, and my mother's sitting in the chair. Arms crossed, red in the face, just like. <laughs> and this is middle of the day. She's being called from work, or, 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 you know, I think she was working that during the day that time. She's being called from work, and she's just mad. I'm like, yo, what is going on? I sit down, and the vice, the vice principal's over there with a stern face, and they tell me what's going on. And I was like, this is because I pulled a chair from somebody? Under somebody? Turns out this guy had a back issue. Really bad one. And I re-aggravated it when I did that prank. And... She says, we're thinking about pressing charges, and I I kid you not, I did that movie thing. My jaw dropped. And I was like, I'm a good kid. 
I get straight A's and A's and B's sometimes. I don't do anything wrong. And she's talking about pressing charges. Well, fortunately enough, they did it. And I eventually got five days of suspension. And you can imagine what happened when I got home. I got grounded for a month, just sitting in my room, playing with toys I didn't want to play with anymore, using my own imagination for time to go by. Five days suspension, because I believed the lie of popularity. See, if I was abiding in the word at that time, I would have knew that those students couldn't add any more value that I had already been given from the cross. We believe that lie, that we can get so much value from other people. Now, I'm not saying that relationships and friends and best friends are, are bad, men, but you are precious in the eyes of Jesus already. You're precious. No one can add any more value to your life because he's bought it with the precious blood that he spilled. See, abiding in the word is essential to avoiding the lies that just slow us down. As I wrap up, there's just one thing I, I want us to be, I want us to be clear about when we leave here today. See, God's protection does not always involve living a long, quiet life with no trouble, with no suffering. It shines in the most among the bold, among the ones who live by faith. There are people abiding in Jesus right now that serve Him faithfully, that are living out their purpose, that will be killed for their faith. Remember, the disciples were. And Jesus prayed for their protection. Some will get sick and unfortunately pass away. For some, life happens because we live in a sinful world. We won't always understand the will of God or why He always uh, allows certain things. But the truth we find in the Word is not simply there to protect our bodies and our possessions. It is ultimately there to protect our souls. The truth will set you free from an eternity separated from God, from an eternity filled with pain and lament. So let us choose to abide in Jesus. His protection won't guarantee us everything that we've ever dreamed of, but it will allow us to courageously live a life fulfilled, worth hearing the words, thy good and faithful servant. Well, Done. Well done. Let's pray. Lord Father, thank you for today. Thank you that you provide such complete protection, Lord Father. It's, it's not just for our physical bodies, Lord Father, but it's for our mind. Ultimately, it's for us to go out into the world on mission, Lord Father, to spread your gospel. So I pray today, Lord Father, that we would be encouraged to do that. That we wouldn't have any fear to step out by faith and spread your name on Guam or spread your name in Micronesia. For you are covering us by your protection. Lord Father, thank you. Thank you that you look over your flock. I pray, Lord Father, that we would be empowered to spread your gospel and abide in your word because you protect us. There may be some of you in, in, in here today and you've heard me about how he ultimately protects our soul and that our life is not guaranteed from day to day and you're thinking about your relationship with Jesus and and maybe it's not where 
you think it should be. I want to give you a chance to make that right today. I want to give you a chance to come into a loving relationship with Jesus. If, if there's anyone in here right now that hasn't made a conscious decision to follow Jesus, would you just simply raise your hand? I'll see you and, and we'll pray together. A conscious decision, the first one. Anyone that's not made that decision yet? All right. Lord, Father, we thank you today. I pray that as we go out from these four walls, that, Lord God, as we go on to mission, whether it be in the workplace or just on the street, that you protect and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church. You're dismissed.